Let's not get caught up in the emotion of the game. We're going to make our run. We're going to walk them down. All right, look, Mo is on you. Let Fry start here, right? DJ, keep handling. Try to get it to Mo on the pop. If they switch, that means Mo Nelson is probably going to fry right here. You got him. He's too tall. Listen, we have to run back. We got to play with a little more pride. Just a little move. We just want to run. We want to eight nothing run, but then we gave up two no. We got to get back. We good. Come on. Since 2014, hoopers from around America have assembled for a chance at changing their financial lives in just three short weeks by competing at the game they love. From overseas superstars to NBA all-stars to local blacktop legends, the basketball tournament provides an opportunity to form the best team possible, a crew with no restrictions for a chance at winning $1 million. To get to that point, though, it takes weeks of hard work and grit and months of preparation and communication. From start to finish to win TBT, it takes hustle. E&J Brandy is proud to present the Hustle Series, a never-before-seen look at what really goes into forming a team to compete for a million dollars. We're going to pull back the curtain on three very different groups. One team that has nearly tasted the spoils of a championship, another team of childhood friends that have become a TBT mainstay, and a first-year team that hopes to represent a storied group of institutions on their way to hoisting the trophy and getting that bag. This is the Hustle Series, sponsored by e j Brandy. In addition to being one of the leaders of Team Brotherly Love, Navarra is the founder and CEO of the Brotherly Love Pro-Am, an event he founded in part to give back to the community, but also to prepare his team to play in TBT. I started a Pro-Am League, where it's based out of our TBT name, which is called the Brotherly Love Pro-Am. We got 12 teams. Each team is ran by either a well-known, really, really good trainer in Philadelphia or players in Philadelphia. I knew the game was going to be competitive, and I knew that adding the Elon ending to the game will be competitive. I know that adding a live stream company to each game, nobody wants to get embarrassed on live stream with. If you're not in the audience watching, you're watching it from your TV or your couch. With a platform in place to bring the community together and to battle test their squad for the tournament, expectations are high. The goal is to win the money. You know what I mean? The way I set the program up is everything that's involved in a program is beneficial to proper preparation for TBT. Instead of going to a training camp, yeah, we still need to have some practices to get down sets, but we got six games, possibly a championship game, with a hostile crowd around us. We got six games with a possible championship game of Elon ending. We got six games of a possible championship game to get to know the new personnel, because I already know it's Sammy Mo. I know what those guys are going to bring, and they know what I'm going to bring. We got six games with a possible championship game to, to know the new coach, Chad Franklin. It's about the preparation going forward into those six games that really, really matter. So it's six and six, you know what I mean? So I tried to set it up perfectly. I've been in, you know, 11 di different countries, four continents. Iceland the past three years as a player coach. What I'm excited about is your ability. I think if we do some of the same things we did, but with our talent level, we should be able to accomplish all we need to accomplish. But the first thing we need to do today is just play and just compete. We know we got Chester. We understand what that means. Chester versus brotherly love. Chester has a huge chip on their shoulder. Philadelphia, you know, we're always a tough, gritty city. It was a lot of anticipation leading up to the game. Honestly, these guys have been on top for a while and Chester's job is to knock them off. So it was a great opportunity for us because the guys got thrown into the fire from the very beginning. Brotherly Love took the court for the first time together in 2021 against local rival Chester, a team loaded with talent all the way up to the NBA ranks. Philly's the kind of city where we might go on to win the TBT. But if you lose to Chester, it's like, oh, you got, yeah, you do that, but you, you didn't beat us, so you're not a, we should have sent the Chester team. This is a very close game, and we'll see if Novar can hit this free throw and end it all right here, right now. Gadsden. Chester. The founder, the captain, and the finisher. Navar Gadsden is racking up the titles for Team Brotherly Love, but make no mistake, there's only one thing he's after this summer. Let's 
strikeout ALS. In 2014, our nation was swept with a craze. A group of friends in the Northeast began a social media phenomenon to raise awareness for ALS. Let's strike out ALS. Go! One of those early pioneers of the trend was a man diagnosed with ALS by the name of Pete Freitas. Pete was Sean's roommate in college. I think the very first year somebody reached out to me about playing in it, it was like $500,000. We lost our first game that year. Next year, I wanted to do an alumni team for Boston College. We called it Skinner's Freight Train. Skinner, our coach from college, and then Freight Train, Pete Freitas, he created awareness for ALS and fun. So I wanted to combine those two. Then the following year, I was like, I want to do something solely for Pete and to honor his fight and what he's going through. So then that's how Team Challenge ALS was created. I tried to figure out ways that we could come in with a bang. So that's where Darren came in. Darren being my friend for a while, I figured that he's an NBA player. He could come in and coach the team. And that instantly brings us attention to not just playing basketball, but to creating awareness with our team. So from there, we just tried to figure out different ways to continue to create awareness. We've been pretty successful and um, we try to build a strong team every single year. With the spirit of Pete in mind, Sean has an important activation to initiate for his team this year. Hey, what's up, guys? This is GM of Team Challenge ALS, Sean Marshall. It's one of our favorite times of the year right now, as we'll be taking requests from you guys of all the people that you want to submit to be worn on the back of our jerseys in this summer's TBT tournament on ESPN. It's a great way to honor that person that might have been battling ALS or who is battling ALS right now to have their name worn on the back of one of our players' jerseys. So all the rules and everything that you guys will need to know will be listed below. We need you guys to email that email, send in the story, send in pictures, also put a phone number because we'll be calling you and announcing that you've won via FaceTime this year. Um, we're gonna continue to do our part in this fight of finding a cure for ALS and make sure you guys check us out this summer. We'll be in the Wichita region, the first round of games, strike out ALS. Hi, Hello. is this Vanessa? Yes, it is. There he is. Hey, hey, hey what's going on, man? How's it going, man? Hey. Hey, Joe. How you doing, Joe? Hi, my name is Sean. I'm the general manager, the person who created the team, uh, Challenge ALS, and uh, this is... I'm Johnny Dukes. I'm the assistant coach. We wanted to call you, man, and, and personally meet you and face-to-face -face and uh, let you know that your dad Joe will be on the back of a jersey this year. Your sister Rhonda will be on the back of one of our jerseys this year. Her name will be on the back of one of our jerseys this year. For us, we want to do something special for you guys' family and um, we're going to honor her that way. <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. I will start. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Oh, oh, yeah. I just wanted to commend you on what you're doing, man. You, you know, you're pretty much dropping everything uh, to take care of your dad. So, uh, I mean, your dad's got a, got a special one. I can't imagine losing my family member, but you know, I lost my close friend, uh, Pete, who, who, who fought, it, fought for six years and uh, so I know what it feels like to, to sit there and, and watch it happen and uh, be helpless in that situation. So if we can bring you guys any type of joy and share your sister's story on ESPN, um, for us, we love playing basketball, you know, but for us, this is way bigger than making money or playing basketball. And um, we, we know that your sister had a story and uh, we want to share that with the world. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Much bigger. And uh, usually every single year uh, after the last game, we, we get the, the address of the family and we send that jersey out to you guys so that you guys have it. And uh, we're going to do our best to, to honor her. Um, and like I've said in, in another phone call, we just may make this deep run and, and, and keep continuing to raise awareness. And hopefully, we can win this thing for you guys. Yeah, man. Good. All right, man. Nice to meet you. Have a good night, guys. You All right, too. you too. Take care. Playing for something bigger than yourself is not a new theme in TBT. In fact, this year, HBC United 
is fielding a squad of alumni from a proud affiliation of institutions. HBCUs are historically black colleges and universities and they were established uh, to serve the needs of black Americans who prior to 1954 couldn't attend PWIs. They award 40% of baccalaureate degrees to black Americans. They're the leading degree givers to black Americans in education, mathematics, and different fields. They still are just such a pivotal role because for a lot of students and a lot of kids today, like HBCUs are still an only option for them. But they just provide a, a great space for kids to come in. Students on campus look like you, feel like you. You don't have to code switch. You can be yourself. Um, you don't have to worry about a lot of the stuff you have to at a, at a PWI. Though there are no racial restrictions for who can attend a predominantly white institution and who can go to an HBCU, the student athletes at the latter still don't view themselves as equals. We got top guys that's coming from HBCU world that's playing on one team. And you know, we all got a chip on our shoulder. We had a chip on our shoulder when we was at the HBCU schools. And more so now, you got top tier guys that has chips on their shoulders playing on one team. And I think that chip hasn't left. But you still got guys that's still trying to make ways and, you know, come pros and do this and that. So needless to say, man, you know, we're out here with a, with a different outlook. It's a lot bigger than basketball. With the racial injustices and everything that's been going on through COVID and just throughout the history of, you know, basketball and stuff like that, man, it's, representing HBC basketball is very big right now. So just looking at it as a whole, um, it's a lot bigger than winning. It's more so with the respect thing. The big picture is we represent HBCU, you know what I'm saying? The money is great, but we represent something totally different, something bigger than just a million dollars. When I left from HBCU, it better me. Better me as a man, a big brother, a son, a cousin, a nephew. It just taught me life lessons. My HBCU experience was a, was a bless. It changed me. It changed me. So I, I, oh, I will always love HBCUs because I know the love is there and they can have it. This area got like so many like just little like symbolized sections, areas out here. It's a lot of DC guy, man. I, li I like it all. You see, they still doing slavery too in Libya. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I definitely heard about that. Selling bro. slaves for like four hours. It's kind of like a, it's a pro and a con. I always say that it gives a false reality that it's not really uh, how it's going to be in the real world because it's so much love, so much camaraderie. You know, as a college, you know, to be able to help one another out or be a resource to one another, man. But and they say it's really not like that in the real world, but, but nonetheless, man, HBCU is a different type of love, different type of uh, atmosphere, man. So, like, when you got HBCU guys, it's almost like we're a cult, man. Like, it's like we feed off of each other energy. We kind of take on the same struggles as far as what our, our HBCUs can provide here and there. So we kind of already know how this player feels, how this player feels. We always kind of went through the same experience, man. So, you know, we'll, we're able to share those experiences and just be able to connect on a, you know, a more personal level level outside of basketball so and all it's a great thing there's no doubt that Jake Brown will tap into his team's off the court connection to invoke a run down the bracket as the teams come together and take the court with one another the feeling of anticipation is building training camp is approaching for challenge ALS and HBC United while brotherly love will continue to strengthen their bond in preparation for the basketball tournament with a million dollars on the line, they all must keep up the hustle on the next episode of the Hustle Series. I think that's the piece I'm helping to bring here is, you know, making this this feel like it's something that it should be, like giving these guys the same opportunity that these Power 5 schools teams are giving them. I just think is really special, but like kudos to these guys and going to an HBCU and actually being HBCU men and being leaders in, in society now is, I think it's awesome. As far as predictions, I don't really get too much into that. But what I can tell you is that we're going to play together. We're going to play hard every time we step out of the floor. When I brought Darren on, I thought that he was just going to be like a guy that played in the league and just, just be there to look. But then I started watching because I was playing for him and I was like, he sets, he, he would stand there outside of the huddle and just stand there and like look up <laughs> and like gaze off into the sky. And then he would just come to the huddle and just draw something. And I would be like, yeah, he just came up with a fire play. You can find more of the Hustle series at EJTBT.com.